Every gardener wants better soil, but not everyone has the time or energy to manage a hot compost pile or dig up their beds. So, what if the key to rich living soil was as simple as what's already lying on your lawn? It turns out, when you combine two of the most common garden waste materials, grass clippings and dry leaves, in a specific way, you can spark a microbial transformation underground in just 30 days. That's not speculation. It's backed by studies confirmed by soil ecologists and tested by gardeners who've seen worms return, moisture lock in, and dull dirt turn dark, all without turning a pile or lifting a shovel. So let's unpack what really happens when you layer grass and leaves directly on your garden beds. This isn't just about mulching, it's about building a living mulch layer that breathes, breaks down fast, and feeds the ecosystem right beneath your feet. Grass clippings are rich in nitrogen. They're green, wet, and full of proteins and sugars, ideal for feeding bacteria. Leaves, on the other hand, are high in carbon. They're dry, fibrous, and slow to break down. On their own, each has a flaw. Grass clippings can mat, go slimy, and smell. Leaves can crust over, block water, and take months to decompose. But together, in layers, they create the perfect balance. The grass kicks off microbial activity and heats the pile up slightly while the leaves provide airflow, absorb excess moisture, and keep things from compacting. This balance mimics a compost pile's core principle. Nitrogen fuels the fire, and carbon maintains structure. But instead of tossing those materials in a bin, you're placing them right where they're needed, on the soil, in the garden, feeding the biology that matters most. The key is to go thin and even. If you dump two inches of grass in one spot and bury it with thick, damp leaves, you'll choke out airflow and slow the whole process down. But if you spread a half inch of grass clippings evenly over the soil and follow with a one inch blanket of dry leaves, you've created a breathable, balanced microcompost zone. Watering the layers immediately after applying them really helps kickstart decomposition. The moisture softens the leaves and grass, wakes up dormant microbes in the soil, and encourages worms to come up and explore. Within a few days, the grass will start to collapse. The leaves on top will trap humidity, preventing the pile from drying out. And below, a thriving microbial network will begin dismantling the structure of the organic matter, turning it into pre-humus. What's critical here is that you resist the urge to turn or disturb it. This is a no-touch method. Every time you poke or flip it, you interrupt fungal networks and destabilize the temperature and moisture conditions. Just let it sit. In the first seven days, expect a slight warmth under the mulch if you put your hand into it. This is microbial activity in full swing. There might be a faint grassy smell at first, but it should never go sour. If it does, it's a sign you added too much grass or didn't balance with enough leaves. Worms may start appearing near the surface and you might even see white fungal threads climbing through the mulch. That's a good sign. These fungi help bind soil particles, retain nutrients, and unlock minerals trapped in plant matter. By the second week, you'll notice the mulch sinking. The grass will have turned brown or black, and the leaves will be soft and darker in color. Rain or watering will pass through easily, and you'll see less of a defined layer and more of a melding into the soil below. This is when the shift from mulch to humus begins. Microbes are digesting, earthworms are mixing, and the soil beneath becomes spongier and darker. Roots from nearby plants may begin to send fine hairs into the layer, pulling nutrients as they're released. If you gently pull back a handful at this stage, the smell should be deep and earthy. That's the scent of good soil in the making. At the 30-day mark, most of the grass will have disappeared entirely. The leaves may be partially intact but soft and pliable. What's more interesting is what's happening underneath. Dig a few inches down and you'll find black, moist, crumbly material that looks like something out of a forest floor. This is early-stage humus, partially decomposed organic matter full of microbial life and nutrients. If you left a bare bed under this mulch, it's now primed for planting. 
if you use this method around existing crops, they'll already be benefiting from the cooler temperatures, added nutrients, and protected root zone. And it all happened without tilling, without composting, and without even mixing. The power of grass and leaves is in their simplicity and their breakdown, well, it really mimics what forests have done for millennia. Drop, decompose, and regenerate. This layering method works beautifully in raised beds, food forests, fruit tree guilds, and even those neglected beds you're preparing for future planting. You'll want to apply it in spring to prepare the ground for summer crops, or in fall to protect and feed the soil through winter. You can also build multiple layers throughout the season. Start with grass, then add leaves, and then, you know, a few weeks later, go for another round. Each layer will build on the previous one, which really accelerates the creation of humus and increases fertility, all without digging or fertilizing. If you're tired of waiting months for compost or if your soil looks tired no matter what you feed it, try this simple, science-backed method. Layer your grass, cover with leaves, water once, then just step back and let nature show off. In just 30 days, you'll see the difference, and so will your plants. If this guide helped you rethink your approach to mulch and soil building, hit the like button, subscribe to Hydrohaven, and share it with other gardeners who could use a lazy shortcut to healthier soil. Because sometimes, the easiest solutions are already lying in your backyard, waiting to transform your garden from the ground up.